So, in other news that I'm still trying to get my head around because that only really makes no sense to me is this: courtesy of Hype Beast, Nike are going to allow you to personalize your own Nike Dunks. Right? Nike have been on a bit of a dunk resurgence the last few months. It feels like uh, was it because of the 30th anniversary? Whatever anniversary it is, there's been a huge push from Nike to kind of uh, force Dunks down our throats. From what I've seen so far, it hasn't been that effective. It's only bolstered the reselling market. I don't see anyone in real life wearing dunks outside of the bait ones that you see, like the the, the chunky dunkies and what have I seen someone wearing recently? The Travis Scott SBs. But I've not really seen a huge amount of people wearing dunks the way that they're pushing them. And especially when you consider the, the GRs, the non-SB dunks that keep coming out. I don't see them anywhere being worn. I honestly don't. And again, I don't go out as much as I used to in the past. I understand things have changed. Generations move on, blah, blah, blah. I might be an old head, but I honestly don't see anyone in real life wearing these shoes. And I'm really interested to know whether, because obviously it's, it's owned by them, right? It's a design shoe. It's kind of, you know, they don't have to license it to anybody. They don't have to pay anything. So you can just keep running it back. But why do they keep consistently trying to make dunks a thing? Especially when you consider the success of an Air Force One, a success of an Air Jordan One, especially the mids, and you consider the success of an Air Max, those dunks don't come anywhere near um, replicating the sales, the kind of legacy, the love that those three models get in general. Because I would assume those those three models are probably the most highest selling shoes within the Nike catalog, right? Air Jordan 1 or Jordan brand itself in general. But let's say Air Jordan 1 Pacific is probably the one of the most highest selling shoes within the Jordan brand. The Air Force 1, of course, is always one of the highest selling and popular shoes. I think I remember one time reading this article about Air Jordan 1s being... Oh, sorry, is it Air Jordan 1s? Yeah, no, uh, about Air Force 1s being the most common shoe worn at a house robbery or something like that right i think second was like an air max 95 so they're very popular and then of course um what was the other one i said air maxes and that could be anything from an air max one to an air max 90 air max three wherever you want to put in there those three shoes are probably those three categories of shoes are probably the highest sellers within the nike space and then i don't know what comes after the fact they might be janowski's it might be something else who knows but this Nike dunk thing is odd because I honestly don't see... Because even when I used to work in 1948, there was an era where they had this... What was that thing called? A Nike be true to your school, right? Where they sort of re-retroed all of those sort of like college basketball colorway dunks. And they kind of did a flip on them. Instead of doing them in a leather um, upper, they sort of did them in a mix of leather and suede. So the bits where the colors were and the essence on the mud garden shit on the toe box were all uh, new bucky suede color, really plush. I regret selling them. I had a, I had a pair, but they sort of, you know, dunk in my opinion sort of lose their shape especially if you've got wide feet they get a bit bulbousy and weird which is why i like dunks which is why i like sorry jordan ones even though they're really thin on the sole they tend to keep their kind of profile looking down a little bit better than actual dunks i don't know why that is but regardless they try to ting with the nike be true to your schools and that never really took off anywhere and now they're doing it again like honestly the only things that sell from nike dunk S or nike dunk are the sbs and only the ones that are super limited editions and covered in flipping glitter and you know dipped in paint and spray paint painted with flipping you know um pharaoh's jizz or something like normal dunks don't really sell too tough so i mentioned to know what is the reason behind pushing this thing continuously like, they just don't stop so anyway it's nike id um article from hype piece of the following Nike Dunks continue to be the talk of the town. Not really. It's engineered again. Not talk of the town. Engineered. Because when does I see someone on the street wearing a pair of dunks? Tell me. I see Dr. Martins. I see Adidas's. I see Reeboks and shit. I don't see anyone wearing dunks. And if you do see someone wearing dunks, more likely than not, they got them seeded. Or they know someone who knows somebody. Or usually. You never ever see, you know, it's it's like seeing a it's like whenever I've seen a girl wearing a pair of shoes, they're always very expensive, like limited edition shoes. So you know she either works in, you know, within the fashion streetwear design space, or she's got a boyfriend that wants her to look like, you know, look like she's dripping. Do you know what I mean? But it's very rarely that you'll just see a girl wearing cool shoes and she's a sneakerhead like you. There are, they do exist, don't get me wrong. I know they've got staff in foot patrol and all these kind of shops, these kind of, you know, female sneakerhead types that do that whole weird dance thing where they're sitting down but when you do see them you know you know the type what i mean so these dunk people like where are they and again you might see skaters wearing them but again most of these guys are probably on the nike skateboarding team so it's i, I don't know i find it very odd it continues here there continues to be a talk of the town um, in its ever-growing amount of collaborative dealings as well as the resurgence of the classic two-tone colorways and now the ever-famous silhouette is adding to its momentum by finally being launched 
loaded by the Nike B by you platform. Okay, so it's not called Nike ID anymore. Why is it called Nike by you? Anyway, for sneaker aficionados who were around during the Nike ID days, the Swoosh's personalization platform before Nike by you, it's the same thing though. You just click colors and you change them. Nike and these kind of rebrands. I wonder how long it took them to find, to come up with the name by you. By you sounds like some African basketball player, no? Nike by you. Anyway, it continues. Um, This will be very familiar to you as you have an option to dress up the basketball turned lifestyle model with some smooth pebbled leather uppers. In addition to choosing between a wide variety of colors, there is a catch here though, however, and it's the inability to recreate any two Oh, inability to create any two-tone beach future school inspired colorway such as the Kentucky. Da, da, da. This makes sense considering the other silhouettes that have previously dropped by a Nike Bio umbrella have forbade customers from designing popular colorways. Interesting. So they purposely stop you from um, recreating colorways from shoes that they're about to put out. So not only do Nike refuse to make enough shoes to for anyone to buy, they also put in place a structure for you to buy shoes with a sne Nike sneakers app that is essentially a lottery. Even if you have the money, you don't have the chance to buy the shoes. They then go out of their way to stop you from redesigning shoes that you might have missed out on on the actual legitimate Nike ID platform. But in the moment you try and do your own custom shoe and sell them, they try and come down on you like a ton of bricks. Tell me that is not hypocrisy. Tell me. It continues. Despite um this... Not that the room to imagination is still ample. Um, here we have re recreated a few options, makeups, and speak for the cherished iterations such as the unreleased um, 7-Eleven Dunks and the eBay Dunks, Chicago Dunks, and more. Blah, blah blah. So people are just basically redesigning shoes that haven't been re-released on Nike ID. That is the opposite. That's the complete opposite of doing Nike ID. No, the whole point of doing Nike ID is to kind of flex your own creativity and, of course, to give Nike free ideas because best believe if you post up a picture of your nike id on your social media feed and it garners a pretty decent reaction and you happen to be friends with people in the industry they're definitely taking a look at your image screenshotting it and then putting it into production and guess what you ain't seeing a cent my g a cent so be very careful about where you're putting up your images of your shoes it doesn't really matter of course because they're going to see it on the back end but this whole idea about sharing your designs and collaborating all this sort of nonsense it's a whole point of bs unless your name is on the contract and they say look you are a designer you're an influence you're going to see that this never give these people free ideas never do any sort of um what do they call those things uh blah, 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 blah. never do um consultation what they call those things where they sit you down in a circle and ask you for your ideas in the collection and you give them the best ideas they've ever heard in their life you you basically get a a, a couple of pret a sandwiches and maybe a discount um code to shop at fucking nike town that's all you get and then they go they go in and take your learnings and apply it to their flipping outerwear and their entire collections they make a billion dollars and you don't see a cent what's it called um uh oh you know that thing meeting i don't know whatever that meeting thing is called don't go to them thing kids please avoid buy the shoes and design them if you want to your heart this desire but don't think that you're kind of helping nike out if anything you're helping them to make millions and then you're also spiting yourself and diminishing your ability to be more creative further down the line but again i don't know maybe it's just me with a nike dunk let me know are you a fan i'm not particularly i think it's a bit of a dead model i think it's getting it works in the, it worked at a particular time things have moved on somewhat the Jordan 1s are basically a better silhouette and a better model than it. The Air Force 1 is basically a better model than it. It's way more popular, a way more versatile shoe. And I just think the Dunks are just not going to ever be a thing. It's just one of those shoes that isn't going to take off no matter how much they try and push it. Um, just leave it alone. It's sort of reminiscent to me when Reebok tried to like jazz up the Reebok Classic and give it all these wacky colours. It's like, no. Um, chavs and and people who wear palace and roll up their cigarettes and wear tracksuits um, with their loafers they like Reeboks right those kind of you know they like Reeboks they like them in the classic white and black colorways give them their shoe and keep it moving you don't need to jazz it up and make it in Nubok or add a little you know um, outdoor sole to the bottom of it like just leave it as it is and keep it moving again only my opinion what the hell do I know